Good evening, everyone. Um, good morning for some, I guess. That's a peculiar thing about doing online conferences. And well, another peculiar thing is that I am actually talking to you three weeks ahead of conference. And uh, I guess the very last uh, peculiar thing is that um, I've decided to change the subtitle of this presentation. So this title is still doing visual ethnomusicology in, in the 2020s. And the subtitle changes as follows, reflecting on methodological challenges. And this is because, well, this presentation will be a bit peculiar because we scholars really like to talk about methodologies, but especially those that work. And we don't talk too much about methodologies that don't work. So in my presentation, I will tackle the greatest methodological challenges that I have encountered while doing my PhD research project that employed or was supposed to employ methods of visual anthropology, more particularly of uh, ethnographic and ethnomusicological film. So um, anyway, before I start talking about methodologies, I would like to talk very briefly about my research background and, and research topic. So I do research with these gentlemen on the pictures. Uh, they are Romani musicians from Slovakia. And I started doing research with them in about 2013, uh, when I was really interested in, in uh, how Roma grow into their music cultures. Uh, because there's common saying in Slovakia, but also elsewhere, that Roma, gypsies, have music in their blood. And I didn't believe the saying, so I uh, started going to Klenovec and Kokava in Slovakia to see whether they may be some specific way of growing into, into their music culture, specific way of uh, transmitting music skills from one generation to another. And uh, well, later I expanded my, my um, research interest in uh, things such as performance of, of Romanes, performance of Romani ethnic identity, and also uh, economic aspects of, of their musical craft. So that's very briefly. And I started doing this, this uh, as an MA student and I defended my MA thesis in 2015. And since then I thought it would be great to do a PhD uh, on this very topic. However, I wanted to do something new and methodologically speaking, I wanted to, um, I wanted to do uh, or involve into this topic methods of visual anthropology and ethnographic film uh, more particularly. So he, wa he was what I thought. I was thinking, okay, I will uh, start my methodological preparation in my first year of, uh, of my degree, the first year of my course. Then I uh, moved to, to the field where I will be a full-time ethnographer and full-time filmmaker. I will be, you know, doing ethnography and film at the same time. And then eventually I would go back in 2019, I would start writing my thesis and I would start um, editing my film. And eventually at the end of the day or at the end of 2020, I would have great ethnography as my PhD thesis and I would have great spectacular ethnographic film. But it didn't quite happen. Instead, this is what happened. Uh, so my methodological preparation were great, but it has also generated a lot of methodological confusions, as I will tell you just a bit later. Then ethnographic fieldwork turned into actual disaster because doing ethnography and filmmaking appear not to be such a good idea, as I will tell you a bit later too. Um, and then here I am in 2021, I still haven't finished uh, the thesis, and moreover, the film is nowhere to be seen. So that's why I decided to conceptualize uh, this, this um, paper as follows. What would happen if this gentleman on the top in the middle of 2021 had a time machine and could travel all the way back to 2017 and tell my former self what to do and what not to do 
when it comes to research methodology, when it comes to ethnographic and eth uh, ethnomusicological film. So I will talk about five issues, five methodological issues that I have encountered, and I will give myself, my former self, my virtual former self, five pieces of advice. So if I traveled back to 2017, I would probably find myself sitting at a desk reading some interesting things about history of visual anthropology, about theory of visual anthropology, and so on. Um, those who are familiar with this discourse on visual anthropology, you know that there is this concept of, of development or evolution of, of uh, ethnographic film as a research method. So at the beginning it was not so great, you know, uh, anthropologists have heavy cameras, not so useful for ethnographic work, they also didn't know much about power structures and these sort of things, but eventually ethnographic film was developing and hence in the 2020s, we should have some ideal form of ethnographic film. And so one could expect that I would just go to, to a library, borrow a book called, say, Handbook of Ethnographic Filmmaking, and I would read it and I would know exactly what to do. But it doesn't happen. And it doesn't happen or it didn't happen because this is not how it works. Instead, doing ethnographic film in the 2020s, it means doing many various ways and avenues and um, there's just so there's such a huge variety and so many possibilities how to make ethnographic film and moreover and this is what this diagram is actually saying if you sometimes if you decide to do ethnographic film in one specific way you automatically deny to do it the other way um, I will talk about it just a bit later. Anyway, my first piece of advice to my former self in, two, in, the two, in 2017 would be don't think about the past, but rather think about your project. So that's first piece of advice. The second issue, and this was something that was constantly popping up during my ethnographic fieldwork in 2018, Am I an ethnographer or am I actually a filmmaker? Uh, so to illustrate it, this is, this is me in, um, in Kokava with my friends slash research participants slash film protagonists. And this is what is happening in my head. Did I put batteries in camera? Did I focus properly? Did I put memory card in camera? Did I set the record levels right? Did I put batteries into recorder? Did I, um, you know, put a card into recorder? Did I place mic correctly? And so on and so forth and so on and so forth and so on and so forth and eventually, and most importantly, you know, you still hear as an ethnographer, you should be interested in what this gentleman is saying to you. You shouldn't be interested in, in uh, all these other things. And this was something I, I really uh, have to admit it was like failure from the beginning because um, when I was thinking about my film project, I didn't think about it as a complementary part of my ethnography. You know, I thought that this would be my ethnography, this would be my PhD thesis mostly, and this would be my film. And this means I plan it as two different products but I didn't realize uh, they don't quite complement each other. They, they were just like, hence, I was doing two things at once, you know. So that's um, the other piece of advice I will give myself is don't do two things at once. Instead, think complementary. So the issue number three is, uh, as an ethnographic filmmaker, do you actually produce film as the only thing, as the only product, or do you also need to pr produce some knowledge? And um, so what happened to me was that as soon as I realized that I'm not able to do both things at, at, at a time, that is filmmaking and ethnography, I realized that I need to, you know, find another avenue to make the film. So I uh, got in touch with film producers and I asked them whether they would be keen on 
helping me with this and producing the film. And we even like put together some, um, uh, some film funds application or applications for film funding. I didn't get the funds and I was happy I didn't get it because I realized that as soon as I would start working for a film as the, as the primary goal, I would completely need to change the way I used to work with my research participants. To illustrate it, here on the picture you see me you know, playing with little camera with my, with my research participants from Klenovets. Uh, as soon as you start producing film for cinema, this is what you need. You need bigger camera, you need self personal set, you need lights, you need, and this is the most important thing, you need to, in order to meet all the deadlines and all the, all the production schedule things, you need to half script the film and you need to direct the film, you need to push it forward to eventually end up having, having the film. And I was really happy, I realized that before I started producing this film, that this was not the way I wanted to work. I wanted to work as an ethnographer, as a friend of my research participants. I didn't want to, you know, bring them uh, the whole film crew and uh, basically destroy our relationship. So I guess this would be my third piece of advice. Never sacrifice your research objectives and your research participants. You know, you may sacrifice some of the film, but not your ethnographic endeavor. So the issue number four is what I call narrativity or ethnographicness. What would you choose? Um, those of you who watch uh, Netflix documentaries, for example, you may have noticed that there is a big trend in contemporary documentary film that is that the films are overloaded with narrations or, as this quotation says, good story reigns supreme. Um, and uh, this was also something that, that came out from our conversation with uh, my, my potential producers because they were pushing me into finding one character and build up this sort of classical Netflix like uh, you know, documentary narrative structure that is main character, three acts, hero journey, climax, resolution, and so on and so forth. And I realized I don't want to, you know, create narrative that, that's not there. I, I wanted to work with what was there already. And uh, this obviously uh, didn't work for my, for my film producers, but it made me realize one important piece of advice. You know, film is essentially about telling stories, hence you need to, you know, tackle some, some kind of narrative. But no matter how cinematically you think, how, how you think about your narratives in your film, how you think, how to tell your story, you never should, again, betray your ethnography and you shouldn't betray your research participants. And so the issue number five, um, should we consider film as, uh, the, as the main product of ethnographic filmmaking or should it be rather a result of collaboration between ethnographer and filmmaker. And here, um, again, those of you who are familiar with, with the discourse on, on visual uh, anthropology, you know that this is a huge topic. Um, that is you know, it's impossible to make a film, documentary film, or completely on your own. Hence, you know, essentially all ethnographic films are collaborative. But there has been a great discussion, uh, you know, to what extent and what is the level of making it collaborative just right. Uh, anyway, there is, a, there is a general trend. I'm going to illustrate this, this issue on, 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 these, on this slide, on, on these two pictures. Uh, on the top you see um, a picture from the process of, of um, participatory video. This is the method in which ethnographer or participatory video facilitator gives camera to research participants. So it's as participatory as you can be, right? But what I've noticed is that as soon as you give this, this camera to research participant, 
uh, you very rarely end up having premiere uh, of your film at Sundance Festival and very much vice versa if you attempt or if you plan to make uh, your film a premiere at the at the Sundance Festival you need to sacrifice some participation of your uh, of your research participants in the film and this was again quite an important uh, for me to realize uh, because as a filmmaker, documentary filmmaker or ethnographic filmmaker, you um, are always dependent on, on some people to give you money for, for making this film. And you are in a bit of precarious position because uh, those people invested money into you and they expect some, some form of capital getting back. And most typically this capital is manifested in acceptance at uh, film festivals having you know uh, festival awards and so on and so forth that's why you are pushed to do your film as you know aesthetically pleasing and as cinematic and as competitive as possible you know this this made me realize that that uh, making film is basically not everything what is really important factor of, of ethnographic filmmaking is the collaboration with your research participants. So no matter how great your film will be, you should not betray interests of your research participants. And you should take into account this moment of, of collaboration with them. So to conclude, um, what I would tell myself in, in general about those five pieces of advice, what I would tell myself if I could travel uh, by a time machine to 2017, well, definitely there are many different ways of making ethnographic film and there's not single one that is right one, there are just many different approaches. And what really matters is to arrive at this harmony when, uh, you know, all these, all this research methodology is in alignment with what you need, what, what are your research objectives, what, uh, uh, what matters in the research, but also to be in alignment with, uh, with what your participants need, what your research participants require and what your research participants like. And so I would very, very briefly just show you the, the references uh, that I used during this talk. If you're interested, you can just like uh, find it on WUVA and um, I would leave you with this last slide that is summary aka general pieces of advice that would be definitely relevant for me if I had a time machine but also that may be relevant uh, for you if you are interested in involving um, film, ethnographic film into your research methodology. Yeah. And that's about it. So I'm looking forward to seeing you in three weeks. And I'm looking forward to your question. Well, in three weeks, it means now. So 